YouTube, it's Chris, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm gonna talk about controllers, different types of controllers, controller players, and how my um, overview has changed on controller players. I used to kind of look negatively towards controller players. My whole outlook has changed completely on controller players ever since I've started uh, doing this YouTube thing and doing this Twitter thing. It's been really, really interesting. So let's get started with the video. Now you lot, before you go ahead and get started with the video, please go ahead and hit subscribe. It's gonna help me out a lot, guys. If you're wondering where I've actually been, like I said before in the last video, been over on Twitter. If you're interested in me optimizing your PC, hit me up over on Twitter, okay? And also I've been on Twitch quite a little bit lately, guys. So feel free, come drop a like, come say hi, come follow me. I'm always testing and doing stupid stuff on stream. It's been absolutely going off. So anyway, let's get started. So guys, I'll start off with a story and where it all started for me, okay? my overview on control players wasn't so great um i've always been a bit of a like bash dead keyboard and mouse sort of a guy um and slowly but surely you know things change over time which is really really interesting club and jack you know who you are mate if you're watching this he got me onto mobile gaming and i really wasn't interested in mobile gaming i've always been a hardcore dedicated pc guy he's a bit of um you know a bit of a frag montage of um some some guy who's like um a uh, cob mobile player now it was you know club and jack was talking about this and he's like oh man you know you can do 120 fps mobile gaming and i'm like oh, why would i bother when i can just play with a mouse and keyboard but surely enough, you know, he kept talking about it. I ended up sort of trying it out. And I was like, man, this isn't too bad. And not buying like a used Razer phone. It was no good, but it did the job. And I could play games at, you know, 120. And I kind of realized there's a little bit of a skill gap towards this. It was really, really interesting. You know, four finger grip. Interesting. So I kind of got into playing that a bit. It's kind of really, really interesting. And what really was a tipping point for me is there's a game called Bullet Force, which is very much like Battlefield 4. Love it so much. If you watch this guy here, what's this guy's name? Um, Isma. And he's like an awesome player. He doesn't really do videos anymore. But the fact that you can do this on your iPad or your mobile and like play with people online. I mean, look at this guy. He's just like mowing everyone down. So that's what started it for me with my little overview on sort of controller players. Because I'm like, hang on, this is kind of similar to controller. Doing it on the mobile. Hmm, interesting. But just look at him just mowing everyone down. It's absolutely insane. So anyway, as you guys know, I've been over on Twitter working on people's PCs. And what I find really, really interesting is there's a lot of guys that are switching over from um, console to PC, but still want to stick with controller. And I mean, I totally respect that. You know, my overview on control players were, uh, you, you know, control players, if you want to get good, you need a mouse and keyboard. Well, that's actually not the case. And my whole overview from mine has completely changed on that. So I've been working with lots of guys that have had consoles switched over the PC. They needed a hand with setting everything up. They, they switched over the PC because they wanted frames. You know, you got to thank Fortnite and COD for having crossplay for that. So they can jump on the PC and still play with their friends over on console. They can have more frames, a lower input delay, um, and a, a much better time, like better graphic settings, let's per se, even in low settings versus a console, you know, higher frame rate, higher refresh rate. Anyway, so I've been slowly kind of chipping away working with these controller guys um, and seeing some of their frag montages that they sent me, seeing how they sort of play and it's changed my perspective. Yes, there's aim assist and I used to be so salty about aim assist, but not so much anymore. I feel like aim assist is fair versus someone that's a relatively decent mouse and keyboard um, player, but I just found that really, really interesting, guys like my whole overview i used to look at you control players and just be like spit on you man like gross but it's completely changed and it's funny how that kind of happens after you start to play some mobile games and you kind of surround yourself with different people and you start to do different things i just found that really really interesting but i mean this really did it for me so i think i spent you know maybe a month or so trying to get the hang of the four finger grip man it was like a brand new learning curve it was like learning to ride a bike for the first time when you're four years old Definitely lots of fun. I haven't had time to do it much lately, but definitely want to. This game kind of died, but COD Mobile is still sort of alive. Unfortunately, you can't do 120 FPS on COD Mobile. They haven't patched that yet. That'd be nice. And I know Fortnite and PUBG are two huge ones. Um, but anyway, so what I wanted to say is what made me want to do this video out of the blue, out of the random, there is um, a client I work with, Razo. He uh, sicked me out. He's from Australia, believe it or not. And guys, go drop this guy a sub. Honestly, he deserves it. He is an absolute beast mouse and keyboard player. Okay. I ended up playing up against him in COD. I think we're playing some free for all. That's how it kind of started. And we're playing free for all. And we're kind of like, we had a bit of a banter here and there with each other, like over the microphone when he took me out and then I took him out. And I was actually streaming doing this and it was, it was lots of fun. It was lots of fun. I'm not going to lie. But anyway, um, 
That's kind of how it started, and he like he messaged me, and he's like, "Man, I want you to do my PC." Um, I'm trying to remember how that worked out. I was even find it on Twitter just to show you guys. All right, that took me quite a long while while to, to scroll down. Not gonna lie. All right, so look, guys, he kind of knew who I was when we were playing against each other through free for all, right? And um, he ended up hitting me up later, and, and I worked with him on his PC. Um, and you know, um. He was really happy with the results, man. I, I wasn't so sure how he would go. And you know, he had a nine um, GTX 970, uh, 4770 non-K, um, DDR3, 16 gig of RAM, only at 1600 megahertz, something like that, and some crappy board, man. Um, look, you know, he was running like low, low. He does like run, run, like to run lower resolution. I think 600, 600 by 900. But while streaming, he was able to get himself consistently 150 to 200 FPS. He was absolutely stoked, man. And the input delay. But anyway, uh, after that, I ended up following him on YouTube, right? And randomly, he comes out with like this, um, you know, controller um, day 14 video. I'm like, hang on. And he, I think he did a controller like day seven video. And I'm like, hang on. Why the hell is he playing controller? He's a beast mouse and keyboard player. And I realized he wanted to switch the controller um, to play some of the Call of Duty leagues. I think they banned mouse and keyboard on that. I mean, I'm not going to get involved and comment on that. I think that kind of sucks a little bit, but I can kind of understand from some perspective. It's disappointing for me going from the COD 4 days of being like the pro COD 4 days, pro mod and stuff like that was all mouse and keyboard. And it's like COD's just gone console, but things are kind of turning around now. The fact that they've done crossplay, Call of Duty, mouse and keyboard and controller and allowing both on most tournaments. But anyway, look at this guy, man. This is day 14, okay? And he's absolutely destroying everyone on controller, man. Like he's never, just to let you guys know, he's never touched a controller before. He just, he literally seeked out, try to watch some of the best controller players, tried a few different controllers, um, and really, really went out there and tried just to get good. And look at him now, man. He's like, I honestly think it's absolutely insane. Yes, they have aim assist, but I just really wanted to talk about this. This whole thing has changed my whole perspective on control players. And I think it's just so cool that guys are sort of, a lot of guys are getting away from console and they're switching over to PC. I just think that's really, really cool. More frames. Um, and even some of the guys I work on switched over to PC, still wanted to use a controller for a while and then ended up switching to mouse and keyboard. Anyway, for me, what do I want to do? I want to give controller a go. Just for the sake of it, I'll always be a hardcore mouse and keyboard player don't get me wrong but i want to give you know control players controller a go like why not yeah like after playing a little bit of like cod mobile and um you know that other game that i was trying out i just thought it'd be cool to something to try you know um just try different things kind of get good at different things because like, literally trying the thing on the mobile like took me so long to figure out it just took me a week to even get comfortable with aiming and my sensitivity and stuff and i think it'd just be really cool to try a controller so i mean what do you guys think write in the comment um a lot of people that i'm working with they seem to be using like the elite the ps4 c40 or revolution pro um I always see mixed things. A lot of people say that the PS4 is best for, um, you know, input delay. And then um, a lot of guys are saying the C40 is really, really good. There's something I want to mention here. And I'm thinking of buying a whole bunch of controllers, honestly, and doing an overclocking video um, just to just see, you know, the differences in the, the response with, with aiming, which is just really, really interesting. I believe a lot of these controllers only come out with 125 or, or um, you know, 250 uh, polling rate. So I believe I've got mouse tester here. I could just quickly show you guys. Um, mouse movement recorder I think will do the job like we're talking about actual polling rate for aiming so this would be the joysticks right um but anyway what's really really interesting is you can um overclock your controller the very it's, it's through the same software um basically that um there might be another video on this this is the one that I'm talking about here in the ds4 but um it's like through the um man I just had a mind blank um sweet low sweet low driver same as the mouse overclock um you know guides that i did before just it's just the sweet low um and also there's another method with the ds4 and some guys are using like these special bluetooth dongles um that you can get from um, amazon and then overclock or clock it through like bluetooth and practically all you're doing is you're overclocking like the um the usb the hub or the usb port or whatever is to do the controller so i found it a little bit of a hit and miss i mean i've had a lot of clients that wanted me to help them out do it or wanted to redo it after i did their installs 
I did notice on some installs or some controllers, like the latency for the USB driver would spike really, really high in latency monitor. And some people that actually gave them worse input than better and other people that gave them better input. So something worth mentioning here, guys. Maybe I'll get a couple of controllers. Maybe we'll do a video on overclocking the differences and try to test like the differences in the actual input delay, what's going to be the best controller. Because I want to try it out, man. I think it'd be cool. You know, I've always been mouse and keyboard guy. It'd be cool to sort of get into controller just a little bit. Maybe play a little bit of COD, get on controller my whole perspective has changed since i've been working with guys that play on controller and i get it now man i get it if you've been if you're raised on a console and you've been con playing console all your life switched over to pc for better frames you know it's hard man me going to like cod mobile trying to work out the controls like i'm still not very good but it's definitely fun you know, it'll be something cool to do so something i want to mention here in the video even though we're not going to get involved with the whole overclocking and polling rate thing i found this really cool um you know little um program from github uh, chris onyx um there's a input polling rate checker that you can actually use you can test that the polling rate now it does have that in the ds4 uh, this guy did a fantastic video on um you can use the ds4 software to test the actual um polling rate i'm not sure if he shows this here or not he might um no it must have been a client that was showing me or it was a different video like the ds4 shelf software can show you the the input um difference you know a lot of controllers I mean, it might be around four milliseconds and you can get it down to one or whatnot, um, which is interesting. But this is a cool program that you can actually test with doing that too. So uh, I've got a follower of mine, really nice guy, Theo. Um, he's kind of done that a little bit too. Now, um, I believe he didn't overclock these controllers because he felt like for him it was worse. But he's got an Xbox Elite Series 2 controller, right? Um, and both of these had the driver and installed and they're in the right usb port and we're talking the usb port closest to the cpu this guy knows what he's doing right um i've worked with him before i've done his install before and i've talked to him and you know, i showed him this um the software and he's done this for me this is the xbox elite series 2 it's like moving the joysticks around i've literally got an xbox controller here i can show you guys i mean this one's kind of old right um but anyway like uh yeah just moving it around like that's input delay for um, Xbox Elite Series 2. And it's wired, it's in the closest port to the CPU at the back of the motherboard, um, you know, so it's, it's there's nothing fishy going on here. And this is the C40, right? So that's interesting, at the C40. So that's the C40 there. That's the um, Xbox Elite 2, apparently. Really, really interesting. I mean, that's quite a noticeable difference. You're gonna notice that. But anyway, I wanna get a whole bunch of different controllers. Um, I wanna try overclocking them. Um, and just see what we can we can get and what we can do out of them. So if you guys have any suggestions for that video, um, that'd be awesome. But yeah, thanks thanks a lot for that, Theo. And while we're at it, why don't I just go and get the Bluetooth dongle just to check that as well. Look, I've worked with all these controllers. I pretty much help overclock most of them. I couldn't tell whether some, you know, some people say it was worse or better, who knows? And some people didn't want it done at all. And then there was one guy I helped with a Bluetooth control. I think I found the video. It looks like it's a, a Fortnite video. Um, but yeah, this is the DS4 software. Yeah, this is it here. You can actually like um, overclock through a special USB dongle that you pair it to. Um, I, I helped one client do this. He, um, like I didn't really know what I was doing. He didn't really know what he was doing, but he'd done it before. So we kind of sorted that out. Anyway, we got it up and running and he was really, really happy. But anyway, this is the Bluetooth dongle. Um, I don't know if you guys can see, uh, zero point, like two millisecond, um, like, uh, delay in moving around which is interesting and I think defaults four. so I just think that would be something really really cool to check out and do that'd be really nice so I'll just put on Razer's controller day two highlights just as we're finishing up here and wrapping up the video so guys yeah just to wrap it up just wanted to let you know that like I used to really look at control plays like scum and I don't anymore it's funny how perspective changes um, there is a lot of skill in it and I really didn't think there was um, and I guess apologies if I offend anyone by saying that but I just wanted to just um, talk to you guys about the little story that I had going through all of that um, and I want to give it a go I just think it'd be fun to do um, and something to, to get into it and try out and I would really like to get majority of the controls because I don't think that'd be relatively too expensive although the C40 is really expensive um, and try seeing like how they respond um, how they work out and try overclocking them and also get the little Bluetooth dongle and try that out too I mean that's going to be really interesting and the cool thing about that is we can see polling rate I can at least see like latency monitor and see if that's spiking or not and um, see if we can find some other measuring tools so that'd be cool um, future video definitely but if you guys got any suggestions for that video um post down below and whatnot so guys thank you so much for watching that's pretty much all i wanted to say i just really wanted to do a video on razo and then my experience with the control players and how my horse perspective has changed 
it's just interesting how things work out who would have thought that i've even had a second thought about a controller player i might have my how things have changed but anyway guys really appreciate you all watching the video hope you enjoyed it and i'll see you guys in the next one take care i'm chris i'm out bye